Hey everybody, welcome to my brief explanation and take on whirling witchcraft. This is the game you should be going to if you want a 30 minute experience with a game that is easy to learn, fun to play, and replayable because there are levels of difficulty that you can add to the game based on the player card that you get in the beginning. I would suggest everyone start off with the initiate card as the rules suggest so that everybody has the same starting resources and the same special player ability. Now after you learn the game the first time, which goes by pretty fast, you will get to try out some of those cooler cards that let you do some really cool things and start you off in your player board with a different amount and different kinds of resources. This game is so easy to jump into, and after you've punched together these cauldrons, which by the way are so stinking cute and the perfect size to keep all of your ingredients in, you're just going to love this game. You're going to fall in love with it, and I'll tell you why. So there is just the right amount of stuff. Now you have the cauldrons that take up the bulk of the space in here so that they continue to stay together and you don't have to take them apart every time, which is great. But you have five different uh, colored cubes. You have three of these arcana tokens for up to five players, a deck of cards, and these five uh, player boards. And so they are, they keep all of your resources. That's it. That's all you have in the box. So it's just the right amount of stuff to pull out and to essentially take up space and take 30 minutes of your time. So this game is just so clean and it's a race and I really like races. <laughs> uh, so you are racing to essentially overload the witch to your left and get them to kind of explode their pots so that the overflow that you give them comes back to your spot and you want to collect five overflow cubes. That's essentially the goal of the game. That's how you trigger the end. Now multiple witches can do that at the same time in the same round and then you have to look to some tiebreakers. But that's the race in the game, and it's fun. Now, the other cool thing about this game is that you pass your cards to the person on your right. So there's a lot of really great player interaction, but only with the players to your left and right. You're obviously competing to win the game with five overflow cubes, um, but you're only paying attention to what you're sending as cards to your player to your right and what you're sending as cubes to the player to your left. And I like that. It's Seven Wonders style and it's it's like even faster and easier than Seven Wonders. There's so many different scoring cards and so many different things and variants. This is so much cleaner and shorter. So the way around works is that players will get four cards and they will take one and they'll place it face down and they'll take their cards and they're gonna pass them to the player in between, the player uh, to your right. And all at once, everyone is going to flip over their card and they are going to um, take the arcana at the top. Now, every card has some value. Now, mine has the little pink cauldron. And when you want to um, essentially take advantage of your arcana is when they reach the even numbers on your tracking card, which is two, four, and six. And when that happens, each different of the three arcana symbols gives you a one-time bonus. And they're really cool. Like, they're super cool. You, you honestly don't want to waste any of your arcana bonuses. That three-step process is the study phase. And there are only two phases in a round. So again, you select a card, you place it face down, you reveal it, and then you take the arcana symbol. Those three steps. Now everyone's doing this simultaneously, which means that gameplay goes really fast and it's super easy to do. Everyone just does their thing and then they say, okay, we're ready to brew. And then you move on to the brewing phase. You will produce all of your ingredients. And what that means is you will take a look at the top part of the card. That's the requirement. You must have that in your player area to put on there to activate, to then gain from the general pool what's underneath it. So if I want to activate Lava Incantation, I will need a black cube, and that will grant me a black, a green, and a blue from the general supply to place 
into my cauldron. Everybody has a cauldron. Now the stuff you gain at the bottom of your card is what you put in your cauldron. Once you have activated all of your cards, discarded the one you paid from your own personal supply and gained what you get at the bottom from the general supply, you take your cauldron and you pass it to the witch to your left. They are going to have to take all of the cubes that you generated and place them into their personal supply. This personal supply area is your workbench and your workbench can only take a certain number of cubes in each color. Once you have exceeded that amount of cubes, those cubes are returned to the witch that sent them to you and they are placed in this top circle at the uh, top of their player board. This is your witch's circle. That's where you want to get five ingredients. Again, because you have overloaded the witch to your left. Obviously, the witch to my right is sending me their cauldron, and I'm going to have to accommodate all the cubes that they send me. Once players check to see if there is a winner or not, if they have triggered that five cubes or more in the witch's circle, um, we move on to the next round. And all you do is take the cards that that player sent you from your left, they pass them to their right, you pick up the three and draw a new card from the draw pile, add it to your hand, take one card, place it face down, flip it over, get the arcana, then you move into that brewing phase and you can activate as many cards as you can. And you can only activate them if you have them in your personal work area, which is your workbench. Phases go by so fast rounds go by so fast, everything is simultaneous, and it's really just this puzzle. How can I get the right cards to get rid of the cubes that this witch is sending me so I can get cubes on my cauldron to send that witch to overload that witch? And it's really fun. It's just so straightforward and it's puzzly. And there's card drafting, which is a great mechanism. And you're really dealing with just how can I deal with these cubes, make these cards, and make best use of my arcana symbols. Don't forget about how powerful and opportune those powers can be on your turn. Because if you need one more cube to overwhelm your, the witch to your left, the pink cauldron allows you to add one ingredient from the supply to your cauldron as though you had crafted it in your recipe card. Ah, oh, so cool. These recipe cards are awesome and the advanced witch cards are even cooler. This game is easy to put out on the table, very easy to teach, combines clean mechanics that all works simultaneous. It's a really fun game and I just think it's super shareable. So if you've been on the fence with this, I say get off the fence, make some of these cutie cauldrons and share this with some friends today. You will not regret it. See you next time.